Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at this 8K resin printer. That's right, we're gonna be looking at the Saturn II and some of the pretty amazing prints I have gotten with it. Okay, so I've got a Saturn printer and I love that that's actually printing right now. And that was one of my mid-size workhorses that I used for quite a while with most of my prints before I got this. Yes, I still use that, but I primarily use my Saturn II now for a number of different reasons. I wanna talk about some of them and why if you're on the fence and you're wondering, should I get a Saturn, should I get the Saturn II, I would probably lean closer to getting the Saturn II. So let's talk a little bit about the guts, the lights, the screen, that kind of thing. Now it's a 10 inch 8K screen and the resolution on that is 7680, by 4320. So, you know, we've got a lot of detail. We've got our AK detail there. And it also has an ultra fine XY resolution of 28.5 microns. So you're getting a really fine dot mesh. Also, of course, the screen is scratch resistant tempered glass with a 9H hardness. And these are a lot of, these are the screens that cell phones are made with. So you know this thing can take a beating. I have had a Resin leak, uh, my FAP got a little old because, I, like I said, I print a lot of stuff and I must have got a little dent in it, a little hole in it. Some, some uh, resin got on there and I had to, and it dried, it cured, and I had to scrape it off. And you, if you want to know what I use for scraping, it's in the links below. And uh, it didn't damage at all, nothing happened, it was perfectly fine. So that hardness really matters. Now, inside here, one of the really neat things and important things is the Frenzel lens, the Frenzel collimating lens. What you're getting with that is this thin lens with these concentric circles that help refocus the light. So light is spreading out where the UV lights sort of just kicking the light out up, but it might stray here and there. Um, where when it hits that Frenzo lens, those concentric circles and those grooves refocus it so they go straight up. So when they're going straight up, you're getting, you know, a lot more detail because they're not scattered. You're not getting scattered beams. You're not getting scattered light. You're getting light that's traveling straight up the uh, LCD. So you're getting a sharper print. And, you know, it seems like it's a really technical thing, but just know that the lens in there that refocuses that UV light really helps sharpen your prints. So the main reason I use my Saturn II now is, of course, the build volume. It has a bigger build plate than the Saturn and, of course, than the Mars. So it is 43% larger than the standard Saturn printer. And the build volume comes in at 8.62 inches by 4.84 inches by 9.84 inches. So that now, of course, not only means you can fit bigger prints, but you can also add more to that build plate. And sometimes if you're printing multiple pieces of a, of a model or, you know, I print out these necklaces a lot that I use, uh, that I sell on Etsy, uh, and I can load this thing up and print out like a week's worth of orders in one go. So I really, really like that. Now, you might be looking at some of these models that are on the table here. And yes, most of them were all printed one shot, except for this guy, we'll go over him in a second, with this printer. So this is one of my torture test models, and uh, this is on sale over on my website, 3dprinterprops.com. It is the Batman Who Laughs, one of my favorite DC characters, modern ones. Uh, I print this as sort of like a torture model because it has such detail. It has detail in the, the leather, it's got detail in the stitching, uh, it has these little tiny buckles uh, all over the place, and this thing has the most detail of any of the ones I've ever printed, probably because this is the first 8K resin printer uh, I've ever had, and I did print these with the 8K resin. This is the other reason I love a bigger build plate. Take a look at this monster. This is uh, from Wicked, uh, you can find his links below. He's on Patreon. He's just got an amazing files. Um, and he's somebody I just uh, signed up to be a patron of a couple months ago. Because one of the reasons, because I saw this, because I'm a huge comic book Thanos fan from back in the day. Now, yes, these are multiple parts. But still, they're huge multiple parts that I was able to print on this. So if we take a look at this, um, 
the figure is enormous and it comes in uh, a bunch of different parts. So we've got, you know, the arms and the hand. We've got his little thing here, his little vestment. His head just popped off. But take a look at the size of this. And that was able to print there. Now, I know you're probably saying, okay, that's pretty cool. I wanna show you this one print that printed on this guy right here, right here. This huge mountain of skulls printed out on that printer. Uh, and it still had some room. So huge, huge print there. Uh, let's take some of the legs off because I'm just, just so amazed at what I was able to fit on this. Pop that leg out. And there goes that leg. This also printed on that. It doesn't even look like it could fit in that vat, but it did. This huge base printed on that printer. So I was able to print, I'd say, 98% of the files full size. Here's another one. And again, the detail in this robe is just incredible and how thin some of the pieces in this robe are. And this thing handled it just fine. Printed on here. So you can print huge files or multiples of files. So for example, I would have like both the legs and maybe a head and something else on that print bed. And you saw how huge this model was. Same thing with this head, same thing with uh, John Wick over here. The full body was printed and then the base was printed. Um, I think I might have done both on the plate at once. I can't remember. So just it can handle an amazing size print or a bunch of little ones. And yes, it has this great build volume, but the printer itself isn't too enormous that you can't fit it somewhere. It comes in at 12 inches by 10 inches by 22 inches. So it doesn't take up a huge amount of space in your shop. And that is really helpful because I don't have a lot of room in my shop. So let's talk about the actual printer itself and some of the, you know, outer things that you're really gonna work with a lot. Now, one thing I really like about this, I guess some people don't, I do, uh, the power switch right here on front. Push that in, boom, the 3.5 LCD screen lights up, simple interface, standard interface, I like that. I ended up keeping that sort of plastic you peel off on because why not keep it protected because you're touching it a lot. Your USB goes into the back right side. Now, I would prefer it in the front uh, left or right just so I don't have to reach back. Uh, I've got my printers fairly close together so I kind of have to reach in between them and I usually have to move one of them to get to it. So up front I think would have been probably better but that's you know, my preference. Uh, it doesn't diminish how much I like the machine. We've got a really interesting cut bevels on this, uh, the protector here, the resin protector, uh, which I like. I mean, again, it doesn't do anything for the prints, but it gives it that sort of futuristic spacey look. Let's pop this hood and take a look at some of the things inside that, of course, I really like. Now, actually, this is funny. This right here, is just my own personal thermometer. Uh, I use these uh, Therm Pros. I got a link below, I get them on Amazon. And I put those in my printers and I have one, it comes with one sort of um, reader and it'll tell you how warm it is inside the printer. Now it's not telling you how warm the vat resin is, but you at least get to know what the warmth level is in there. What it does come with is what you see over here, which is a carbon filter and it plugs right in and it receives its power from that. Now if you've got some of the other uh, chargeable uh, units like that, they can be a little bit of a pain. You forget to plug them in to charge them then you don't have one. So I like that this is right in there and I do notice that it has cut down smell quite a bit. Our vat is a standard vat, all metal. It's got a max line there. The screw system is the same. Um, again, I don't think this is a design flaw. I think it's a user flaw. When you remove this, you have to take the screws all the way out. And they're pretty long. I'm still screwing on this thing, right? And boom. Then you empty your vat or you do your, your, your leveling and you put them back in. Here's the thing. At least once every few months, I forget to screw these back in. Luckily, I've only ever come downstairs because my stuff is in the basement 
and my build vat or my vat has been suctioned pretty much to the build plate and is right about here and it's just moving up and down now good thing it's never fallen because then i would have resin everywhere so you need to remember to put those screws in will you forget yes you probably will forget uh, maybe put a post-it or something on the printer to remind you to do that what are the other things i really like about this I love this bigger handle that they have now. It's huge, you get a good grip on it, clamp that thing right down. The other thing are these gigantic um, screws in here. They are huge, you know you've tightened them, you're never gonna strip those things, they're so gigantic, and that is fantastic. Of course, it's got a dual access rail, so you get a nice smooth print. Noise-wise, it's very quiet. It's one of the printers I don't really even know that's on. And I literally have to check to see if it's done because I can't hear it. So in conjunction with the uh, minimal smell from the filter and how quiet it is, is one of the reasons I really, really dig this printer. Now, the last thing I want to show you is on the hood here. There actually is a circular opening here with some screw holes where you can add a, uh, a vent port to connect it to, you know, an auxiliary or, or a... A, a hose to actually have a fan that sucks the exhaust off if you want it that way. Um, I have not had to do that. What I actually use it for is for the winter. Uh, I put a system together, if you want to call it that, where I attach some uh, of that metallic sort of foil hose to a vent that's in my basement. And I have that vent going into something I attach to that in the back and it pumps heat into the printer to heat up the resin. Now, here is, and that leads me to, my, my really my only complaint about this printer and um, a couple of their other resin printers, what I would really, really love to see here, and this would make, it would make this printer perfect, is a heated vat. Now, I know there's all kinds of ways to do it. I've seen it online solder this to that i don't want to do that i want to plug a uh, something into that like a usb into it and turn it on and it heats the vat to me that would make it perfect or even if they sold one that i can add on to here i'd buy it and if i've forgotten to look there or if that's a new thing they have please let me know in the comments below and i will go buy it other than not having a heated vat i can't really think of anything this printer doesn't have it uses cheetah box which is great you don't have to learn another slicer and it's just pretty much a bulletproof printer and as long as you level it and follow their instructions to level it and it's like any other thing you're going to get some decent prints out of it have i had failed prints yes it's usually because one the fep was really worn because i printed a ton of stuff on this as you can see and this is half of what i've printed on this then it got worn and i think that caused some problems two i didn't level it enough i'd print four or five pieces of this model and i'd say oh maybe i should level it now i'll wait the next one would fail um, the only other problem i had with failure was definitely because of temperature uh, i live in upstate new york when it's negative 10 out it's very cold in my basement and no matter what i do uh, even when i attach the heat back here um i have a problem so because the heat's not on all the time so the resin cools down pretty rapidly so that's the other reason i would love to see a heated vat so if you're looking to pick up your first resin printer or your next resin printer and you don't have an 8k printer and you don't have like a, a larger printer or even a mid-size maybe you just got a gigantic one and because that's the way you went but you need a mid-size one because you realize you don't need a huge printer for everything then this is a printer, the uh, Saturn II, I would definitely consider picking up. Now, I bought this myself. I didn't get it for free. I don't have anything with Elegoo. Uh, when I do reviews, uh, I don't get paid for them anyway. But again, this is one I just bought myself. And if I needed another mid-sized printer, I'd buy another one because again, it is a solid, solid workhorse. Now, if you want to see this model painted, there will be a couple videos probably because this will take me a while to paint that revolve around the Thanos thing. And this will be a whole series of videos I'm gonna do and I cannot wait to do it. I've got some crazy idea. I might even do some drilling into the Infinity Gauntlet to light them up. You know me, I can't just do a print. But when I can print out 
where is the glove? When I can print out like maybe three of these hands and I can make a mistake, why not? So I'll probably print out two or three more of these, do some drilling, do some experimenting and see what I can do to make them light up. Because why not make the project harder? What well, more fun? Which I know sometimes it's the same thing. Right? Sometimes it's the same thing. Tell it to my wife when she hears me cursing down here because I shattered another one of these or my light, my wiring isn't working. But it's fun. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I had a great time showing you this printer. Uh, if you're interested in one, links are below. And for all the stuff that I used here, including the resins, the models, where you can get these, these are on my site. I did a video of John Wick. You can find out where you, I got this below. And uh, that's about it. Oh, also, before I forget, I also have a Patreon page. I started a couple months ago, maybe like six months ago. And you get four files, usually more, for 12 bucks a month. We also have one that you can sell the prints, uh, and that's 25 bucks a month. And it comes with sales information that uh, I do some research on from other sites, what they're selling for, what I sell them for, and things like that. So, guys, take it easy. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.